time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and today we're gonna be reviewing a mechanical keyboard sent to me by MassDrop.com. Now this sucker right here is a little special and I'll tell you why. First of all, a lot of you guys have wanted me to review a Ducky mechanical keyboard and this is my very, very first Ducky. But more specifically, this is a Year of the Horse edition, which makes it a little bit more special and it's a mini, which means it's a 60% keyboard. So it's not even like a 10 keyless. It's like you don't even get the arrow keys with this thing. It's just a basic, basic keyboard. But the first thing I noticed when I picked this thing up is man, it weighs a ton. I can easily say that this tiny little box weighs more than any other keyboard I've reviewed to date. So I'm really curious to see what the build on this is like. So guys, if you would like to actually win this keyboard, MassDrop is actually doing a giveaway. And to enter that giveaway, all you have to do is go to the URL in the video description and sign up for MassDrop.com. It's, it's free to do. And you also have to leave a comment down on this video. Now, if you're already a member of MassDrop, just leave a comment down below and you will automatically be entered. And the drawing will happen 10 days from the time this video is posted. All right guys, so what do you say we open up this keyboard and take a look? It's my first ducky. All right guys, so the first thing you notice is the box actually has a lot of gold leaf on it and it's actually a pretty fancy box. All right, let's open her up. Well, first thing you notice when you open up the box is you got more boxes. So this is Boxception. So if we open up this little flap right here, there we have the keyboard. And you can see it's actually a really small keyboard. And now it's even more apparent that it is a total boat anchor when you take it out of the box. This thing is heavy. Looks like the box has a little user manual in it and uh, some kind of a warranty card. And it looks like hidden away over here on the side, we have another compartment. And it looks like it contains additional keycaps. It looks like we have a function key, a couple different escape keys, a delete key, and a context menu key. And then we have another pad that came with it that has another function and another control key. So we'll figure out why these are in here in a bit. Also, it looks like we have a USB cable here. It's actually a really, really nice USB cable and it's gold plated, which is nice. But it's definitely a no frills kind of cable. A lot of keyboards now come with like the paracord braided cables and stuff like this. This is literally just a heavy duty USB cable. And it looks like the last thing that the box contains is an egg whisk. I think, I think it's a key puller. All right, done with the box. I can tell you right now, if you guys look at this, this is a solid block of aluminum that was milled out. Um, so this reminds me a lot of like the old MacBook Pros where they would take a single block of aluminum and mill the whole thing out. Although I can tell you right now that this keyboard actually weighs more than my MacBook Pro 17 inch. I mean, this is, they, they went completely overboard on this. All right, so on the back here, we have the part number and the serial number, and we have a URL to their website. But other than that, it is all just metal and rubber feet. And you guys can see that on the top, it's also a milled piece of aluminum. So aside from the circuit board and the mechanical switches themselves, this keyboard is for all intents and purposes, just a solid block of aluminum. I'm not even joking, guys. I'm pretty sure you could kill somebody with this. But seriously guys, don't kill anybody with this. Just to give you a little bit of comparison, here I have my Corsair K70 keyboard. And the whole top of this keyboard is also metal. And this keyboard weighs about probably half, maybe a little under half as much as this does. That's pretty impressive. And you can also see that it is a 60% keyboard. You literally don't have any of the home page up, page down keys over here. You don't have the arrow keys and you don't have the 10 key. So if space is an issue for you and you need a small keyboard, I can't imagine that you could get much smaller than this without shrinking the keys. Now the USB cable just plugs in right here on the corner and you can see the USB cable is angled. So if you break that USB cable, you're gonna have to find another one that's angled. Otherwise it's gonna be protruding out the side of the keyboard. And also notice that there isn't any channel on here for you to route the cable. So the cable is always gonna be coming out of the left side of the keyboard. So make sure that you know that before buying this keyboard because some people I know route their cables in a very, very particular way on their desk and that might be upsetting to some, but it is a very, very flush mount. I do actually like how simple the design is. You can tell that all of the money in this went into just making it a big milled chunk of aluminum and make it strong as hell uh, versus having a bunch of frills and gimmicks. Now, another thing that I noticed right off the bat is if you look, there's no F keys up here. The F keys are actually the one through zero keys. If you look on the front of the keys, you can see it's labeled F1, F2, but almost every single key on the keyboard has dual purpose. You can see over here, there's even some keys for doing mouse operations. Over here, you have your arrows. You have your up, down, left, and right arrows if you hold the function key. 
So basically what they did is instead of putting more keys on the keyboard like with these, but to still retain those operations, they basically made each key a dual operation and they give you a function key to enact that separate purpose. And that's actually a pretty cool idea. I've seen keyboards do that with uh, some of the keys, but this one looks like they did it with all of the keys. So you basically have all of the functionality of a full size 104 key keyboard, but crammed into a little 60% keyboard. That's pretty cool. All right, I just plugged in the keyboard. Okay, as you guys can see, the keyboard has been recognized. And you can see when I push the caps lock key, it actually turns purple. And these keys are backlit, but they're not RGB backlit. They actually have, I believe, two different colors that they can be, and we'll explore that more here in a little while. But the default of the keyboard here is not to have any lights on, which I find a little bit weird. I would expect that when you plug in an LED keyboard, the default action would be to have all the LEDs on. I also notice if you hit the function key, it does turn all the keys a different color that have dual operations. So you can see only some of the keys are purple, and those are the ones that have two purposes. Now to take the caps off, you just pull out your little egg whisk here, I mean key puller, and spread the little things apart. Stick it over the side of the keys and it grips it, and then you just pull it off, it's that easy. And boom, there's our winner. We actually have Cherry MX Brown switches. Now guys, usually you know I'm a throw the manual away kind of guy, but in this case for this keyboard, you're definitely gonna wanna read the manual because it opens up a whole nother side of this keyboard. So looking through the manual, it basically shows you like which keys are actually dual purpose keys. The function layer is what they call it. And then you can flip through and you can also see that you have a function alt layer. So that's another key combination that exposes yet another set of functionality. And then you have something called Ducky Advisor. And Ducky Advisor allows you to basically put the keyboard into a setup mode where you change what certain keys do. Like for instance, if you want to change the caps lock to a controller or a function key, you can do that through the Ducky Advisor. And that's why they include these extra keys here, is when you change the function of that key, you're also gonna to wanna to change the cap for it. Now I can honestly say out of all the keyboards I've reviewed, I've never seen a keyboard where you could actually change the functionality of each key and swap out the cap. Now I know some keys you can change the functionality out of or you could do macros, but I've yet to see a keyboard where you can literally just change the caps lock to something else and put a different key on it. It also has a little chart in the back of the manual that talks about the lighting mode setup. Now you can clearly see my keyboard right now does have lights going across it. And to scan through the different modes, you actually do uh, function alt plus G. So you hold down function, you hold down alt and you hit G. There's breathing mode, so each time you hit a key, it kind of lights up and, and fades down. Actually, that's not breathing, it just dissipates. That's kind of a cool mode. There's some kind of a little sprinkly mode there where it looks like raindrops falling down. You have a rainbow pattern that goes across, and it looks like the colors it can achieve is like blue, uh, purple, and red. So now each one of these different lighting modes that it has, and it looks like it has seven of them, you can actually flip through the modes and then there's a second set of keys that you can use to basically change the brightness or change the characteristics of that mode. So unlike the Corsair keyboard where you actually have software running on the computer that's controlling each LED on the keyboard, this is 100% controlled internally to the keyboard. There is no software you install on your desktop. You basically configure the whole keyboard through doing these series of clicks. So seriously, do not get rid of this manual or you're gonna, you're gonna be in a lot of pain or at worst you'll have to go to their website. Now, I personally like the raindrop mode because I, I think it looks the coolest with the keys just kind of like lighting up and, and moving around. I think that's probably the one that I like the most. The second favorite would probably be the rainbow. Now let me show you another feature I found that's actually kind of weird. I haven't seen this feature on any keyboard, but there's a little picture of the mouse, the left button, the right button, movement of the mouse, uh, scroll wheel, all that stuff right here. And if you hold the function key down, you'll notice over here I can move the mouse cursor, hopefully you guys can see that. If you can't see that here, I'll grab the window. So I can literally push the Q key, grab the window, and move it around with, with the keyboard. How weird is that? So if you were on a computer and you didn't want a mouse, but you still want a mouse functionality, you could do this. I honestly couldn't see myself using it that much unless I really wanted to move the mouse cursor in a very, very straight line. But it is kind of cool that they did map keys to the mouse. But at this point, I can honestly tell you, I don't think anybody would ever wear this keyboard out or break this keyboard. This thing seems just massively heavy. Okay, that was, that was a lot worse than I was thinking. All right, well, obviously the most important thing with the keyboard is how well it types. So let's go ahead and head on over to Type Racer. So far, I kind of like this. The brown switches aren't that bad.
because that was 129 words per minute, 100 percent accuracy. Wow, that's rare for me. So this this keyboard's pretty good. I can tell you right now, my biggest problem with it is the size. I have a tendency to figure out where my fingers are on the keyboard by feeling around its surroundings. Not having those other keys throws me off a little bit, but I'm sure I could get used to it. All right, guys, well, I've used the keyboard for a while and there's definitely some pros and cons to it. So let's go ahead and start off with the pros, what I like about this keyboard. First and foremost, it is the most sturdy, heaviest, well-built keyboard I've ever used, like bar none. There's no other keyboard that's even come close to this level of rigidity. I'm pretty confident you can flip this thing upside down and drive your car up on it as a ramp to change the oil. I mean, it's crazy. And you might think that that's a pointless feature, but there's a couple things that make it not so pointless. And that is, when you have it on the desk, it doesn't slide around or move around if you bump it and you're typing on it. It is very, very solid. And the biggest thing is when you're typing, especially when you're typing really hard and really fast, you notice that the switches are planted much better. On a keyboard with a plastic base, you find that if you push a key really hard that the switch does have some give at the bottom because it's mounted to a piece of plastic. Since all of these switches are mounted to their board and that board is mounted to the solid metal base, you definitely notice that when you push the key, you get a lot more of a solid bottom out, if that makes sense, when you hit the key down. And I think that that's actually really cool and that justifies having a big heavy base. I also like the LEDs that are on this. I think it's cool that it does the whole purple, you know, the, the whole like red through blue and purple scheme. But I am a little disappointed that it's not full RGB because I really, really like the RGB switches and I like the fact that you can basically emulate any color. Uh, another thing that I really like about this thing is that it has the dual purpose keys. You can hold down the function and you have control over volume, you have media keys, you even have your arrow keys, you have all your function keys and your mouse keys. But again, it's something you have to get used to because you have to hold function to operate any of the F keys because they're absent. But again, for the space saving, I think that that is actually a really, really cool feature that Ducky did. I also like that the keyboard is fully programmable by holding down function, alt, and H. I think that's really cool to put it into a mode and you can go through the manual, but you do have to go through the manual or look online. It's not intuitive at all on how to program this thing to change the functions or to change through the color modes and, uh, and do the minor adjustments on them. So you definitely need to keep the manual around for that. But again, you can tell the goal of this keyboard was to save as much space as possible without losing any functionality. Now, the things I don't like about this keyboard, honestly, are things that are just personal to me. You might actually have a different taste, but my typing style is completely unique. I only use two fingers on this hand and, it, and the way that I orient, orient myself on the keyboard is by feeling the surroundings. It's almost like how a blind person would interpret their environment. And because of that, I find that I keep getting off the home row on this keyboard because I usually don't use these little detents on the F and the J key to figure out if I'm on the home row. I actually use the feeling of the edge of the keyboard and over here where the arrow keys are and I feel my way around. And for some reason on this keyboard, I find that I get off centered a little bit. Now that improved greatly as I was doing type racer and the longer that I use this keyboard I would eventually get used to it but it was something of note that I noticed that I would get off a key every now and again the other thing that I dislike about this keyboard is the price. It's $189 at the time I've done this review, which for a mechanical keyboard even is very expensive, but it is a limited edition keyboard and you got to realize that it was milled from a solid piece of aluminum and that is a very, very costly manufacturing procedure, which means that the number of these out there probably are fairly limited and that's going to drive the price up on them too. But honestly, I believe if you did buy this keyboard, it would probably be the last keyboard you ever bought because I can't imagine anybody could break one of these. All right, guys, well, if you've decided that you want your own Ducky Mini Year of the Horse Edition keyboard, and this thing is, is a beefcake, um, you can actually head over to massdrop.com using my link that's in the video description, and you can sign up for their service. It's free, or you may already be signed up. I found out, actually, a lot of my subscribers already know who Massdrop is, and it's no surprise. They're actually a great company. They're a group buying site. You basically go in there, and you vote on the products that you want to purchase at a discounted price, and then the more people that vote for those products the more of a discount mass drop can get bulk buying it direct from the manufacturer and selling it to you. And so you get a huge discount. Like for instance, on this keyboard right now, it normally retails for about 189. And I think right now, if they actually get enough people interested in buying this, they drop it down to 149. And that's a pretty substantial savings. Another cool thing about mass drop is that if people vote an item back, sometimes it'll come back. So if, if the mass drop ends for this, 
um, and you still want to get the keyboard at a discounted price, you can keep voting it up in the future and hopefully they'll have it again. So guys, if you have any more questions about this particular keyboard, go ahead and leave them down in the comments or you can come over to Twitter and tweet me. I am at Barnacles over there. And uh, also if you guys find some stuff about this keyboard that I didn't cover or particular things that you guys like about this keyboard, please leave them down in the comments or contact me and I'll add them to the Q&A section that I put at the end of each one of my video descriptions. That way people can go in and see common questions and answers and things like that. All right, guys. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I think this is actually a really cool keyboard, but for me personally, 60% keyboards just don't seem to work with my typing style. But on the flip side, even with Cherry MX Brown switches, I did hit 130 words per minute on one of the type racer tests. So I was pretty satisfied with that. So overall, it is a good keyboard. But if you guys have one of these, I would love to hear your opinion on it also. Okay, guys, till next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.